Thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, my name's Matt Johnson. I'm going to moderate this panel for you guys. And uh, as you probably already know, we have Zach Retz, Cooper, and Ryan Lang over here. Round of applause for these guys for showing up. Today. So you guys know our, our primary, we could talk about 100 different topics at these panels, but uh, our primary topic here is doing creative work versus doing client work and some of the similarities and differences and how those things affect one another. I don't think we could have had three better guests to discuss this. And I'd like to open it up just uh, from my own experience, saying that the grass is always a little greener on the other side, right? Uh, I think everybody who has a lot of professional work really wants that free time to do their own client or their own personal work, and then vice versa. If you're doing all your personal work, you just really wish you could pay the rent with your artwork, right? So uh, I would love to hear what any of you or all three of you have to say about that. Uh, the idea that maybe grass is greener on the other side sometimes. Well, being at a studio, they like take care of you. You get like your health care, uh, get free, free snacks. Um, <laughs> if you're having a bad day and you don't like produce much good work, you still get paid. Um, yeah, stuff like that is nice. Um, paid lunch. <laughs> paid lunch is always a good thing, right? Yeah. Ryan, what about you? Um, I mean, the, yeah, the upside of working like either at a studio or for a client, you know, doing your work for a client is like you have rent and you have a mortgage. <laughs> like, so that kind of takes care of that. But um, I mean, then doing your own, you know, the, the your own creative stuff on the side is I guess that's when you don't have to answer to anybody and you get that kind of freedom, but it also comes without pay sometimes. What about you, Cooper? Hello. Hello. Just making sure this is working. Um, <clears throat> so when I first graduated college, I did pretty much only personal work. And I don't know how this happened, but I like fell backwards into art directing for TV and movie campaigns. And I have an amazing situation where they hire me 10 days a month which pays all my bills and I have the rest of the time off. So I somehow, because I struggled a long time with work-life balance, somehow I got this kind of amazing situation that I highly recommend if you can finagle it <laughs> on retainer. Look for it. <laughs> Work 10 days a month. Got yep, it. That's okay. what I do. Got it. Made that note. <laughs> um, I guess like in a lot of ways, I think that the rules and requirements of client work really sometimes help structure a little bit of you know getting those creative juices flowing. Do you guys enjoy those restrictions, those rules and requirements that come with client work? Does uh, it help you kind of like work within some restrictions, or would you rather have sort of more free form work? Uh, yeah, sometimes it's nice because it'll like push you out of your comfort zone. Um, like for example, like I worked on a movie with like tons of uh, like buildings and cities and stuff. So I I'd never really painted cities before so I had to like learn how to do that and I'm glad I did because otherwise I probably wouldn't have um, so. I think on Wreck-It Ralph um, that was my first movie and if you asked me in a million years what I what was the last thing on the list of things I thought I would paint I would have told you candy race cars <laughs> and somehow that became like my th Thing for six months, eight months, something, and I got a job out of it. So that that creative restriction actually helped me keep my job because I was a trainee when I started. And then they're like, "Oh, this guy can do like these three D looking renders. Maybe we should keep him around." So <laughs> that's really cool. Um, I find that just doing personal work, you get kind of inbred because you start just referencing the same things you're already interested in. You don't know to look for things you don't know to look for. So I love client work because I think it enriches your personal work. And then in turn, your personal work gives a voice to your professional work that makes you an individual and like not replaceable. Um, so they kind of they help each other. And as far as restrictions, yeah, I. I I love restrictions in the art direction job, but I hate commissions because when I'm doing my own thing, I just want to do my own thing. I was going to ask about commissions in that way too. It seems yeah. like a lot of people have that feeling of like, when yeah. it comes to a commission. I think it's either like pay me at that 
professional rate and have me do something. Also, art direction is like one step sideways from my own personal stuff because it's like concepting ideas for movie posters, essentially. Um, so I feel like it doesn't completely drain my personal well of energy. Um, and I love having restrictions for that because then it's creatively um, challenging and, and pushes you. But for the personal work, it's like, I've put in my time. Now I just want to paint hot babes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it seems like um, there's this myth of, I wish I didn't have a job so I could create what I want. Um, you wish that you didn't have that time taken out of your life where you could just have all the free time in the world to create what you want. And maybe you could speak to that a little bit. I've been there and it was fucking hell. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I've been there and it was not fun. Um, because because personal work, is it's all about yourself. It's ultimately somewhat autobiographical. And I don't think that as humans we're made to just be constantly navel-gazing and like examining our own... I don't know, minds over and over and over. It's just very masturbatory, I think, at a certain point. And so if you only do personal work, it's exhausting. You get sick of yourself, and you're not getting any outside influences. So your work gets really boring really quickly. And having to rely on your own personal work to pay the bills, uh, some people thrive in that, but I, I personally suffer. I like keeping them very separate, personal work, and then the stuff that pays the bills. Do you guys find that your professional work takes up more of your time and you have to make time for your creative work? Yeah. Um, and how do you do that? Uh, one, one thing I do, uh, I kind of um, been more relaxed on it lately, but I would, I would always take my lunch break and do like a little sketch for myself. Um, and that was, that was fun because it's like I can just practice whatever I want to for an hour. Um, or I'll get up early and um, I'll spend a few hours before work uh, doing like personal projects, work on my like stories or whatever. So setting aside that time is, is really nice. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. How do you set aside that time, Ryan? Uh, I kind of, I'm changing it up a little now, but uh, basically my schedule was like, I, I get up and cause I'm getting older, <laughs> I have to go exercise. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I get up, I go exercise, and then I get ready for work. I go to work, and then I try and carve out like three hours an evening, which my situation, which is my wife is completely fine just watching reruns of Seinfeld, and <laughs> like she's totally like on her own most of the time. Um, I, I, can, I can manage the three hours to just kind of work on my own personal project, but lately, uh, you know, and she brought this up was, you know, you can't do it all the time. Like it just becomes, you start stressing yourself out. And I actually had like anxiety attacks about it. Like, oh, I'm not meeting my own quota. Like I am, I'm not meeting my own self-imposed schedule, which <laughs> is kind of dumb, um, especially when it's your own personal work and it's supposed to be more fun and it's not supposed to be stressing you out like regular work would. Um, so I try and, I try and hit, you know, a good chunk, like two hours, three hours after work. But sometimes after work, if I feel like I'm burnt out, I don't try and like beat myself up about it. Or you know what, come hell or high water, I'm gonna sit behind this computer screen for three hours and draw something. Cause it's gonna, I'm just gonna hate the process after that. If I do it long enough and it's something I don't enjoy, then yeah, I'll just stop doing it. That makes a lot of sense too, because if there's, uh, it, no matter what our day jobs are, I think that we can all relate to the idea of like frustrating ourselves by not doing our own personal work and the anxiety that kind of starts to build up if you just don't carve out that time for yourself. Um, I, I wanted to ask you guys also about having a plan for that time. Like a lot of us may come home from our day jobs half burned out from whatever it is that we were doing during the day. And we sit down and we look at a blank page and just go, well, now I got to figure out how to make art at the same time. Like, do you guys keep kind of a system of what you're going to maybe freely play with, I guess? Does that make sense? Yeah, I if I don't have a plan before I start, before I like, like if I get up early, I'm like, I'm gonna, I've got three hours before work, I'm going to do something. If I don't know what I'm going to do before that, I might spend like an hour and a half 
of that time, like figuring out what I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, so I, I always, um, maybe on the weekend or something, like I'll, I'll like write down some ideas or like start doodling uh, some things that I want to paint. Um, so that that way, when I come in in the morning, I've got I've got some things already kind of started, and I can just like grab some references and start painting. That's awesome. Do you, Ryan? Do you work for an hour and a half on the idea before you start? Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm I'm. What works for me is that uh, right now my personal project is a like a graphic novel, and so I did like all the thumbnails, and then I've started refining the drawings, and so it's. It's pretty much I have everything like laid out and I kind of know what I have to do. It's just picking which panel I want to try and tackle in that three hours. Like if I'm having a good day and I come home from work a little early and I feel like I, I can take on a bigger image than I will. Or if I'm just like, nope, I'm just going to draw a bunch of heads tonight <laughs> or two heads. Um, then I can I, I have that blueprint there and I'm ready to go. Um, my advice is just to start because I think it gets really overwhelming if you're thinking, oh, I've got to sit down and make a drawing, but it's a lot easier to be like, I got to sit down and just make one mark on this piece of paper. Cause once you start, you'll, you're just going to keep going, but it's kind of like going to the gym. You're like, I'm just going to go for five minutes. You can trick yourself into going. <laughs> That's a really good piece of advice. Um, and along the same lines as all of this, I, I wanted to ask about, um, the process of learning you all seem to have very unique ways of either you know whether it's going to the zoo and doing animal studies and sketches or if it's uh you know zach i've seen you uh, do plain air painting with your ipad on instagram it's awesome like do you guys find time for that learning space as well and how do you do that um yeah I always try to do something where I'm like constantly learning, whether it's uh, a new book or like a new like schoolism class or something like that. Because um, um, if I if I don't see like growth in my own work, then I start getting like depressed and like feeling really bad about myself because I want to like you know keep moving forward. Um, so yeah, like sketching um, like outside or doing some plain air like those are all like really helpful things to like keep keep your eye evolving that's awesome yeah. any tips ryan i just keep drawing the same thing because it's 150 pages <laughs> <laughs> but uh when i when i was doing more kind of like learning to learn like i i i love um john park's paintings and so i'll like buy like gum roads and, and watch John stuff and try and do like, you know, uh, some studies like that if I have like a little bit of downtime in the morning. Um, but I used to I used to be pretty good about going out at lunch. And then I, literally you miss like one and it's all downhill <laughs> from there. Like I would go out and plan air paint and then yeah, I missed one. It just started stacking. Oh, I'll go tomorrow. Oh, I'll go tomorrow. And then yeah, here we are like four years later. <laughs> <laughs> Um, same with that. I, I'll get on like a good groove of going out planar painting or life drawing or something and then you miss one. That's all it takes. And it's anyway, but um, for I, I really like to use my work as my education, too, because I have to do a lot of research on really weird, random stuff. So as I'm going, if I find something at work that I think is interesting and I want to dive down into, I have a little notebook and I'll write it down. When I go home, then I'll do research. A lot of it's like visual research, um, like photographers to look up or themes or weird, creepy stories or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. You just follow your curiosity. I think if you're curious, yeah, you can't help but learn. Yeah, that definitely helps when you go and investigate a little bit of that and get into the 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 backstory of something you're gonna make is so much fun. Um, I do want to also definitely open it up to anyone who has questions they would like to ask. Uh, show of hands, sir. I would say, uh, what was, can you talk about briefly your own personal projects and tell us a bit about them? Because I know some of your work and some of the like, your first Zach. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Me, me and my friend Kevin, so over there, you can wave, Kevin. Uh, hey, Kevin. Uh, 
yeah, it's helpful to have a friend uh, to work on personal stuff with because we like get together on the weekend and we like go to a coffee shop or something, and we uh, like develop our stories. Um, and then like throughout the week, we'll just uh, like I'll like paint stuff or design stuff, and then Kevin will board stuff, and then we meet up and we show what we've been working on. Um, um, yeah, uh, so it's. Yeah, it's good to have a friend to do that with and someone you can like collaborate with and um, also someone who's like good at stuff that you're not good at. So uh, he helps me like get better at things and I can like tell him something about color maybe uh, or yeah. Uh, I'm working on a graphic novel based off of a, a Japanese folktale, uh, Bisun Boshi, it's the Inch High Samurai. And uh, I wanted to do it in full color when it was gonna be 80 pages and then it got to 150 pages. <laughs> and I thought, oh, you know, I can still do this in color. And just recently <laughs> I got talked down to like, no, 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 you should probably do it in black and white so you can like release it sometime in, in your lifetime. Because <laughs> um, I did the math and it would have been something like, I thought, 24 months of just painting and that would have been like three hours every night and like 12 hour weekends and my wife just looked at me and she was like you're dumb <laughs> <laughs> um uh so yeah i got she's my voice of reason and she said you know the black and white drawings are fine so just do that so um from for my personal work i started doing mostly uh, gallery shows so i'd have usually like a couple group shows and a solo show every year that would be kind of the um deadline i had to hit to get paintings done and then i moved more into and i do illustration too then i moved more into publishing releasing art books and now i kind of just draw whatever and i release prints and kind of just do whatever i want with my time off because sometimes i just make like sculpt little vegetables and stuff. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Great answers. Anybody else got a question lingering out there? Yes, sir. I was wondering if you have any tips on like time management stuff if you need to Time management tips if you guys didn't hear that back there. Um for me it's um definitely setting aside time. Um like if that means getting up early or like setting that time aside at night. Uh um, so then you know that you're, that's your time you're going to do uh, like your, your work work. And then also having time set aside where you can do stuff like work out, get exercise, eat dinner, make food, <laughs> watch a TV show. Because uh, you need that time, too, to like refresh. And uh, yeah. Any time management tips, Ryan? Um, Cooper? I mean, pretty much the same, like having like, uh, like, like I said, I was trying to do like three hours, um, like a specific time. But again, I think within reason, like when you when you're not feeling it, don't force it. Like, I mean, it's your personal project. It's not supposed to be torturous and you're not you don't have to suffer for your art, no matter what anybody tells you. <laughs> um, I'm lucky that, that my wife is like, if you don't know uh, Helen Chen, she's a badass and she basically just talks me down from a ledge like every evening and <laughs> she's like fed up with it at this point like I'm like Helen do I have to work tonight and she's like do you feel like working no well then you know but it's it's always good to have somebody like in your corner like that to help because the time management like I like I was saying like you can set that time management but it's also how you feel like mm. keeping a schedule is there's no point in keeping a schedule if it's slowly like killing you. Yes. <laughs> um, I will also say I'm a huge believer in lists. I really like making disgustingly like intricate breakdowns of what needs to happen in tasks and stuff. And I don't always stick to it, but at least, oh, I also like um, do that fake out thing where I'll tell myself it's due a week before it is actually due. I just put it in my calendar as a week before, forget that it's actually due the next week. So when I'm freaking out, it's like, oh, well now I've already got to the emotional place where I'm ready to start out of panic. And now I know I actually have the time to also complete it. So a lot of faking myself out, making lists and tasks just so I can, Kind of getting back to that just start thing. If you have a task and you're like, oh, the first step is just mount this piece of paper to this board, it's a lot easier than if the task is complete this 
show of 25 paintings. Um, yeah, and on time management, like that live uh, work-life balance too, I think is so important so you don't. So it isn't this horrible, yeah, burden, fall and chain. Mm -hmm. Sir? Um, well, a couple of things you can give yourself like a little time limit. Be like, like, like for example, like lunchtime, you're gonna like, uh, you have to finish a painting that lunch. Uh, so then it's just like to get yourself out of a funk or something. Um, uh, that's helpful. Um, also, I like to like um, if there's something I'm learning, you can apply that to your personal stuff. So like maybe. Like recently, a couple of things was like learning Blender. So I'd like start to apply that. And then I've been working on trying to draw better. So I've been like drawing more. So then applying that to personal projects. And yeah. That's good. Any other questions? Yes, sir, in the back. Um, Okay, this is a secret, but I give them one image that they asked for and one image that I want. And then you make them pick. They'll usually pick the one they want, but it's a, uh, I read, or I heard, of course, this is gonna sound like idiotic. I heard a TED talk <laughs> on the architecture of choice. And it was all about like, and it sounds weird. It was all about ragu, like the pasta sauce. And that's, this guy like has like this architecture of choice and literally like, I, I find that works. You give a client exactly what they asked for. Like even when I was freelancing, give them exactly what they asked for, even if you think it's not good. And then if you have the time, you give them your version of you're like, no, this is what I think works. So you've basically fulfilled the design brief, but you've also given them what they're really paying for, which is your best take on their idea. But answer. it's a good TED talk about <laughs> <laughs> pasta sauce. That's awesome. Any other questions out there? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to ask, like, how do you and your managers communicate with other personal perspectives or work with family, friends, social interactions? Like, how do you guys communicate? It is so important to me to have a balance with life, too. So I go camping every month. That's how I decompress. And I usually go alone because I'm a creep. So, um, <laughs> That really helps, and, and I think it really helps to almost have it in your schedule, like every month I'm gonna go, because otherwise you can put it off. There's always something to do. Oh, I should be working on this or that. But if you make it this weird, like I can't miss a month or it's gonna fall off, and you go every month, then you're just, you're gonna have it, you're just gonna get it done, and then you need it. You need to make time for it, even if it feels frivolous. Make that time. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, so the page I'm on is the one after the page I just finished. <laughs> I'm not even keeping track anymore. I think I've, I've been bouncing around, but uh, hopefully I, I, I think what that question is actually asking is when am I going to be done? Oh, okay. Well, I, hopefully now that I'm doing black and white, uh, it's probably, I'm hoping I'll finish everything by February, March because I, I started, the way I started the book was a little more looser and I didn't really have like a process. And as I got to like chapter three, four and five, it started, the drawing started getting tighter, the values started getting tighter. And so I think it'll speed up, I hope, um, for the last kind of like third of the, or what is that, half? The last three chapters, there we go. Um, and as far as like tutorials, I actually, I really wanted to finish a, a Gumroad before today. But uh, I should be done with it by next week sometime. Uh, 
Eastern Boshi. Yeah. Pasta. <laughs> it's uh, I'm just Pasta. taking one of the I'm just taking one of the the pages, uh, uh, a page that I really liked, and I'm trying to like paint it up as kind of like a look of picture kind of thing. That's really cool. Are the questions out there? Yes, ma'am. I definitely enjoy personal work uh, way better. And um, yeah, it's one of my goals to be able to do that full time. That's cool. I think you were going to say something over there, Cooper. I didn't want to. Oh, no. no. I'm going oh. after it. I'm going after it. Uh, I definitely enjoy the personal work more because I'm the boss. Um, <laughs> uh, but I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely like to be my own boss down the line. Like, I'd like to be like a showrunner or kind of like sell an IP or that, that sounds so corporate. I'd like to make something cool and have it move on screen. Um, I would never want my, my passion project to be my full-time work. Um, yeah, I think if I won the lottery, I'd still go into work at the ad company because it helps on personal work and it keeps me saying to work as part of a team. But um, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Other questions out there? Yes, sir. Yeah, another question. So like coming into like a studio or like getting a, a freelance job, um, do you guys like have like a process down like already? Or did you always have to like kind of relearn like based off like your art director and how to do certain things? If you guys in the back didn't hear, he asked about if you already had a process coming into a studio job, or if you kind of had to learn from those art directors what the process would be, is that kind of the yeah, question? Yeah, not, not like what the process would be, like with directors, mm -hmm. but like did you, like let's say like you wanna, you're doing environments, right? Like for like a story or something. Um, did you already have like a process down like coming into the studio? Like how you would go about? Designing like an yeah, environment? Yeah, designing a studio and all that. Um, I mean, I have the way I like to do things, but then you always have an art director or production designer. And at the end of the day, you're working for them and whatever they want to see and how they want to see your thoughts coming through. So it's, there's always a little bit of adjustment. I think the best art directors will take what you have and they'll be able to work with it. Um, but yeah, I think there's a little, it, it's a little bit of a, a learning curve every time you jump onto a new show, even in the same studio, like working you know, I worked on a couple different projects at one studio and each art team leadership is different. Yes, yeah, in the back. Uh, when it comes to budgeting for making like web series, right? Like, what's the process for that? Budgeting with money or time? Oh. Well, yeah. Um, to start off with, uh, I say like you have to fulfill your financial obligations and the faster you can do it, the more freedom you have. Cause like the freedom is just the distance between how fast you can fulfill them and what your financial ob obligations are. Um, and then make a bunch more for savings for a rainy day. Cause shit happens for sure. Um, maybe I'm, I'm yeah. I'm very footloose and fancy free. Budgeting? I agree. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh shit. Okay, I thought. <laughs> that was a no comment, I think. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Uh, any other questions out there? Yes, sir. Uh, hi, uh, I was just kind of wondering, um, how do you make those hard choices between uh, the short amount of time you have after work to take on freelance or She will tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, well, she does tell me. Like, she will, like, just straight up say, I haven't seen you in, like, four days. And then I'll kind of have to, like, crawl out of my office. But I think also just, yeah, you just kind of decide, okay, I'm not going to work on it today and don't feel terrible about it and then have fun. Like, there's other stuff, like, you're not, like, I don't know. 
I think ultimately your job doesn't matter. We're told it's the end all be all, but actually you're just crafting a life that you want to live and the hours, the minutes of your life are more important than anything that you accomplish. So if your career success has is a vehicle in which to give you the kind of life you want to live, then you invest more time. But if it is compromising your quality of life, not just immediately, not like, you know, long term even, then I think you have to reevaluate that balance. Do you guys find that there's little ways where time kind of escapes you that you could you maybe have these time leaks during your day, whether it's social media or these other things? And do you have like a trick for getting away from that? Because you all three seem very structured in different ways with your time. <laughs> so maybe each of you could share a little trick that you use to just catch yourself and start that stopwatch over again. Um, for me, I try to stay off of social media like uh, during the workday, and then I'll just mm -hmm. like check it at night or like in the morning or something. Yeah. Um, because I think like I recently got my first smartphone, so it's like Instagram is right there, and I can just like check it all day. I yeah. found myself just like looking at it all day. I was like, I gotta stop this right now. That's a good one. What's your guilty pleasure, Ryan, that you got to stay away from during the day? Sharing my opinion on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Which I found one way until I realized, you know, so I have an iPhone, you can do the double click. I have an older iPhone, so you do the double click and then it'll pull up all your apps. Before I knew that, I basically put Twitter in a folder, in another folder. So anytime I wanted to open it up, I had to like really search for it. But yeah, I should probably stay off Twitter. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think like everyone else, social media and um, you know, YouTubing goats screaming and stuff. Um, Nicolas Cage losing his shit. Um, I when I find myself doing it, I'll just gauge: is this uh, boredom or like, do I need? Is this me telling myself I need a break? Because sometimes I think the best way is just to like lean into it. Be like, I'm just gonna sit on the couch and de and pour myself a cup of coffee and just really leisure hard um, for like 20 minutes and then go back to to work. Um, just to maybe I just need that break. Those are all good tips. I will say this mm. and. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, but I will sometimes take a nap. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, <gasps> no. yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. so like I turned 40 this year <laughs> and like after your thirties, like you're living it up right now. Um, like, yeah, once you, once you start like, yeah, 40, like I'm starting to get tired and stuff. Like it's like, oh, it's nine o'clock. I'm tired. And it's like, what? I used to stay up till like two in the morning, but I'll take like a nap in the middle of the afternoon and like, sitting there going, That's, this is what my dad has been talking about. <laughs> so naps, naps are awesome. Like, like literally like 15 minutes. And yeah, I even- you can't go pause 15 or you start getting yeah, into exactly. sleep inertia. Yeah. Do you do coffee naps? Coffee okay, naps? Okay, so coffee here's nap? what you do. You chug, you chug coffee and coffee works by like uh, going into those, um, basically what gets tired in your brain from just thinking, making too many decisions. So you chug a thing of coffee, like time a 20 minute 15 minute nap no longer and you wake up just like whew, it's awake. <laughs> like legit like i i i wouldn't do it because i thought i would wake up all groggy but like now i have like the airplane neck pillow at my desk <laughs> i'm a believer in the nap leaning into the nap hard i like it any other questions out there yes sir in the back Um, like, uh, I'm starting to, like you mentioned blender, I'm starting to get into blender. I, I saw a couple tutorials and just how like real time, uh, engines are just like, they're almost like they're, they're so close to like the pre-rendered stuff. So anytime I see something like a piece of artwork that just kind of like blows me away, I'll try and figure out how they did it. And if they're using unreal or blender. Then I'm all about whatever tool they're using. I'm going to look into it. That's a good answer. So you had a question over here, yes. Um, so like in my day job, I do content design and I do work in Photoshop, but on my own time, I do a lot of VR stuff and I make stuff in VR. And one of my personal projects is working on like a film. And 
Getting over the hump of the concept art phase. Is the <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you if you have like a little team of friends or however you're doing it, um, who are like kind of relying on you to like, oh, here's the character design. Now you have to be done with that at some point, and then someone has to model it. Um, I, then you have to call it done and you have to move forward because there's like people relying on you. A solid group of friends will get it done. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, when it comes to your own personal projects and then seeking that through to like the final completion, is, has there ever been a time where you felt like you were too freeloading yourself and that it wasn't the right thing to do that day in order to feel like actually go all the way? Personally, I don't think I could, I could call myself a writer or director until I've actually like written or directed something like I, I guess if I did if if I actually so I didn't write Isamboshi like I wrote it in pictures because I just don't like writing words so I like just literally thumbnailed out everything and then afterwards the dialogue kind of like was sprinkled in but uh like if I was directing a short I wouldn't call myself a director before I put it out there if you if you direct a short and the short is out there then yeah you're a director but like I can't, I, it, to me, that's, it, it's kind of, it's hard to answer because it is also kind of like selling yourself to people. Uh, and you almost need to, I hate to say this, like pad your resume for some people just to take notice. Like you need to, oh, uh, like I'm a director, even though you haven't directed anything yet. Otherwise, if you don't put that in there, they don't take you serious. So. I don't know. It's a it's a catch twenty two. Like you don't want to be disingenuous, but at the same time, there needs to be a way to get people's attention. Because if they just look at you as like a like you're oh you're a vis dev artist, you're not going to be a showrunner. It's well, but you haven't given me the chance to showrun yet. So, so you have to find some ways to do that in your personal work to kind of show like like you said, like with your personal projects, like you can kind of direct because you're kind of putting this together and telling the story in that form. Yeah, is and I, right? I, I think, yeah, the proof is in the pudding. Like if I show somebody a con, like a 150 page comic, hopefully they'll get from that, that I have a sense of story, <laughs> that uh, a little sense of like storyboarding, what needs to happen. Um, and then I can just, I find like the safest thing is to say creator and then that, that just kind of like encompasses a lot of stuff. Other questions? I think you had a question over here. Oh, um, say you've been going through a particularly tough uh, case and uh, you're kind of uh, How do you guys approach uh, to kind of mitigate that perhaps you <coughs> that you might be able to start to work uh, either your end, trying to steal energy from taking uh, trying to do personal work it's so real. Yeah, it totally happens. I, I think it's okay to just take time off too. Like give yourself a break if you're really burnt out. Do something completely not related to art that you love and makes you happy until you're excited to get back to it. Um. Um, if I'm like frustrated in my job, um, usually I will do better when I don't care so much about it. I'm, I just trick myself into saying like this is just a stupid job I'm just like painting this stuff like doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things and then I'll like uh like I just trick my brain and then I'll like do a bunch of paintings and I'm like oh okay this this is good and I move on definitely good uh other questions yes ma'am Uh, 
for me, I'll like write down all those different ideas uh, that I have. And then um, I might like do a couple doodles for each of them. So like I've got those ideas down, um, but then I'll like pick one to like focus on for a few weeks um, and then move on from there. Oh, um, I second the list idea because I think that what you're talking about, that uh, fervor of excitement because you've got all these ideas, sometimes it's almost like you can't, you don't feel like you can put them down because you have to complete them or do something with them before you forget or lose that inertia. But if you write them down, those ideas are always there. You can always come back to it and it kind of frees you up so that you, you almost become like an empty vessel and new ideas come through um, and you just keep writing them down and then you can always go back when you have time. But I would say, if you, if you have a bunch of stuff you want to do, just do as many as you think you can do without um, compromising the quality of any of them and that you can also finish in a reasonable amount of time before you run out of inertia so that you don't, like you're saying, kind of um, take on more than you can complete. Do you multitask? I, I mean, if they're quite different, like if I'm sculpting veggies or something to like decompress from painting something, totally I'll do two things in one day because I think it, Sometimes it kind of re-energizes you. You just want a break to do something else. And if you have the excitement for both, I mean, go for it. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, hi. How do you properly, have you ever been like stuck in a project that you were just not pleased with at all, like the client, and you just do not want to work on this anymore? It's like the really easy this project going any further and stuff. Uh, how do you just properly walk away from a project with I've had a lot of like commissions and stuff in the past, um, but I've never I've never walked away from a job or commission just because I didn't like it. I just push through it, just grit my teeth and do it. Um, if it's something like a client's really difficult or they're not paying you, or it's like some kind of like kind of reasonable reason to leave, then I'm I love low stress, so I'd be the kind of person to be like, you don't have to pay me a dime, but I'm walking because I'd rather not have the money than the stress, but I've never been in that position, but I would if I was really, really stressed to just like keep your, however much you thought you had to pay me. I don't need it. Um, I try to do it in like, like chunks. So they'll pay me for this week of like sketches or something. And then um, next they'll pay me for like the next week of like final paintings or something. Um, so they kind of get that trial period. It, it, you get paid for that first week and they really don't like what you're doing. It's just like not a good match or something. You can just be done and just move on. So it's good to like leave yourself a way out. Yeah, I think it's good to also kind of, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend jumping ship whenever something gets like, you have like a bad day at work because that always happens. And I'm not saying that's what this question is about, but like also having like just the presence of mind to realize that sometimes things aren't a good fit and they don't have to be. And that's not, doesn't reflect negatively on either party. It's just, okay, it started off one place and then ideas change and they evolve. And if it's no longer a good fit and the project is not what you hoped it was and they're not getting what they hope they were getting, they wanted out of you, then I think it's, you can probably bring it up like that. But I, I think as long as it's, like done in a, a respectful, amicable way. I think that's always, it's just the nature of, you know, people part ways sometimes. So, but I, I, I would be selective about it because it does, it, it kind of like, it can reflect on you if, you know, people are, especially in, I'll, I'll just speak for animation. Like animation is such a small community that people talk to each other. And, you know, uh, if, if it just seems that, if there's like someone is flippantly just like leaving projects just because, oh, well, they didn't like a note or something, then that kind of gets around. Makes sense. Very good answers. Got time for a couple more questions. How do you keep your creativity? Like, do you get a lot of like, editorial stuff from your parents or
Yeah, I mean, I, I get really inspired, like they were saying, seeing other work. And I really like to see work that's like quite outside my field of study even. So I don't know if you guys ever use, um, what's it, designspiration.net. It's really cool because you can search by image color and it's really nicely edited, but it's mostly kind of a graphic design blog and like a kind of hoity-toity photography blog. But it, the design is so beautiful. The colors are gorgeous. It feels really um, you get really interesting ideas and in the way it's laid out, everything's kind of mushed together and you make connections. Um, I find that really sparks a lot for ideas, for creativity. That's perfect. Yeah. Were you going to say uh, something? Right? Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, I'll lean back on, I think you mentioned this before that like, uh, I'll lean back on like going down the rabbit hole of like reference searching and like, there's been stuff that I've had to research for films that still kind of is interesting to me like uh like tensegrity like i had to learn about that for for big hero six and that's if you don't know it's the the strength that an object has when like a, a suspension bridge that that there's more strength in something being pulled than by standing on top of it does that make mm -hmm. sense anyways you, you start like you start researching that and then that kind of like led me to this like experimental architecture blog and then you start like seeing you start getting new forms of inspiration like i discovered um uh, she was an architect uh zaha hadid and i got i got introduced to her work and then you it just starts you start seeing other people's inspiration and it starts just like fanning out and you get this huge just like well of just kind of like oh that's cool stuff what can i do with that I think uh, also like oftentimes going outside your immediate field of study is a really useful um, just because then you're drawing from a well that isn't immediately like what, you know, what's all around you. And it, it kind of creates more interesting connections and you follow your curiosity into really interesting places that you would never get to just just looking at similar work. Could you give us an example, like even if you just make it up of like, how you would do that like what those things would be that you would pull together me yeah um well back to design inspiration uh so if i get into like a photographer's work or something um oh who is this guy crudson he does these really creepy ones of like people some are naked some are not in kind of like um suburban things but like maybe the living room is dirt these really surreal fever dream type photography but then you find his inspirations and you go down this rabbit hole and it leads you to like philosophy um or like surreal philosophies yeah it's just interesting you can follow the rabbit hole down and then it'll lead back to your own work it's inevitable if you're curious about it that's really cool. I think, how do you guys go about, uh, when you when you find all these references or you see a lot of other artwork that you like, um, it's easy to become overwhelmed, I think. Uh, how do you kind of bring it all back in together and say, now it's time for me to make something out of all this research I've been doing? Is that the big question? <laughs> I think, I like, uh, usually when I'm, when I start like a search for, or like something outside of like uh, on Big Hero Six, we were um, yokai's microbots. Like they said, well, we don't want it to be like a fluid, but we want it to act like a swarm. And so that led me down the path of like starting to look at ants, and then looking at like you know that uh, forming organic bridges, and then the whole idea of like I think that's where I started learning about the the tensegrity principle and. Right. And then that started like leading to like cymatics, which is this, the visual study of sound. And it all started from like, oh, we want it to be kind of like this, or you can give yourself that prompt. Like, oh, it can't be, it, we want it to, I want it to be like this, or I actually don't want it to be anything like this. Like they literally said, we don't want it to be venom. Oh, cool. And so that's why it's these small, like little robots and they're kind of like a staccato animation. But uh, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. Uh, any last questions before we wrap up? Just a couple more. Yeah, just uh, a question. Like, do you guys have any like random business learning projects? Like, when you're like really trying to get started, and how would you go about? I know back then you were buying like a few random things, but you were trying to get started with that and shit. How would you go about like you know if you're not on like a fifteen minute thing? Um, what would you kind of potentially do? Um, I think. Something that I've been thinking about is splitting up a day. Like if I did quit 
full time eventually, then I could do like half a day freelance or the first half of the week freelance and that would like pay my bills. And then the second half, it would be devoted towards uh, coming up with pitches and my own stories and stuff. That's cool. Any other questions? Yes, Mary. Um, my favorite murder um <laughs> last podcast on the left and um this podcast will kill you it's about infectious diseases those are my favorite just some light listening for murder, painting time murder infectious diseases <laughs> just really gets you in the mood to paint right yeah. On the other end of the spectrum, I actually, I actually don't listen to podcasts, um, but I watch. I, I I realize that I'm slowly cultivating my grandma's living room. As far as like afternoons after I come home from school, I've gone out of my way to find '80s cartoons that I just play in the background, and uh, so I just have like it just puts me back in my grandma's living room. Um, but I should probably listen to more podcasts, and then that way I wouldn't like be quoting 80s cartoons and <laughs> I'd actually be able to converse with adults. Zach, you got anything that you listen to or pay attention to while you're working? Uh, I usually listen to like high energy death metal when I'm <laughs> painting. Kind of just blocks everything out and I can just like <laughs> paint fast. Uh, Have no thoughts. Just yeah, paint. Just, right. yeah. But I listen to like Joe Rogan. Um, he usually interviews some pretty interesting people. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's really good. All right. Well, guys, thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up now, if you don't mind. Thank you guys. <laughs>